there's no ultimate success, honey. <sighs> Only fleeting changes and reflections on the wolf. Joanne and Patty exchange a look. You need to eat, Lizzie. The baby stirs, clutching at her mama's breast, then suckles and sinks back into slumber. Patty smiles lovingly at her tender infant. It all goes by, Patty, and then you can't believe it. I remember her little hand clutching my breast and then sinking off to sleep as if all would be safe in my arms forever. The passage of time is so painful. Every moment, no matter how glorious, is moving on. Every baby, no matter how fresh, is growing up and just growing old and dying. I remember the landscape of her face so vividly. How I wanted to protect her. And now she's gone. The geography of her features that should just last forever. It will never be again. It will never be. And now I look at your daughter's open face, tender forehead, her fragile fingers and softened mouth. And I know that we can never protect her. I want to still, I want to, but she will go, she's gone. My tears fall on her sleeping face forever and I still know, I know it's true. Oh, my sister, I'm so, so sorry, so sorry. My heart breaks for you, but Re Rebecca and Rainier will come back. I, I know they will. Don't give up. I, I have no children now. I had three. I gave birth to them. I nursed them. I raised them. And now they're all gone. How can they do that to me? Lizzie, Lizzie, kids that age are pretty egocentric. Even good kids, they'll do whatever they want despite their love for their parents, despite our anguish and worry. If God willing, they live long enough, they finally do come home. Exterior early morning, San Javier, Arizona. On the outskirts of town, they reach the Coyote Howls trailer park. A dog barks fiercely somewhere within aluminum walls. A particularly rundown trailer is surrounded by a lively array of spinning sculptures, all made from shiny beer cans. They head for the front astro lawn. Even if we wake him up, this is way less scary than knocking on the Hell's Angels Club No kidding. She knocks, waits, knocks louder and elicits a groan from within. Hello? Sorry to bother you. Pancho? Can we talk to you for a minute? Pancho invites them in and offers them a Paps Blue, ris blue Ribbon for breakfast. <laughs> but they pass on that and accept their sister's old journal instead. Morning, later, Mission San Javier in Delvac, Arizona. Sunlight gleams on the towering white walls of the magnificent mission and inside the vast sanctuary, the gold decor is dazzling. Hundreds of candles flicker, and ethereal choral music plays. Wow. Yeah. No wonder she liked it here. They huddle in a pew and pull out their sister's old journal. These dates are a while back. Yeah. Yeah, this is when she was working at the Desert Fox. Don't think that majoring in cock tees at Desert Fox U was the education mom and dad envisioned for me. I found myself wondering, do I wear the grimmer parts of life all over my body? Does it show on my face? It makes me almost wish I'd gone into engineering like my polyperfect fucking sister. How come no matter what I did, she was always so pissed off at me? Because you were everything she wanted. She adored you, worshipped you. I think she was angriest at you because she needed you the most. Lucky me. If she's smart enough to say some mean shit, she can always find the weak spot and nail it. Yeah. But then when she was sorry, she was so sorry you had to forgive her. Every time. Her heart was so genuine. Well, hey, she found the guy. What guy? The homeless guy who ran off a rapist. Wow. She found him and gave him money. Oh my god. She went back and worked to work that night and at the wretched place one night before she left and gave all her earnings to the homeless guy who saved her. You know, that that is so like So like And here's the lighter. Here, this is later. This must have been while she was living in San Javier. Here. She could have written the same way. Yeah, she could have. I'm miserable and have been alone inside my busy little brain for so long. Self-inflicted isolation. I wander in and out of shallow or usury relationships, simultaneously wishing to be known and hide myself. 
completely at a crossroads as to my own identity. Time hardly seems to have occurred literally as of late, but age seems to have descended overnight. I've missed the boat. I am in a desperate hurry to catch up. When did I first become conscious? Gift shop, Mission San Javier. At the counter, they pull out their last dollars and use three of them to buy a candle. In the sanctuary, they light the candle below a luminous statue of Mary, then bow their heads. Exterior midday Safeway at the San Javier Reservation. They sit in the suggestion of a shade from a spindly tree in the parking lot, taking stock of their remaining pittance. Six dollars and twenty-four cents. Rebecca hauls her purse from her pack and dumps the contents between them. They pick out the change. We're up to a whopping seven ninety-four. Party time. Interior Safeway in the beverage aisle. They carry a basket with a few groceries. Generic peanut butter, whole wheat bread, two bananas, some ramen. We've got enough left for a can of soda. No, we don't. And uh, that's a total waste of money. Yes, we do. Put it back, Rain. That is absolutely no food value. I don't give a shit about food value. I want a soda. For God's sakes, quit acting like a baby. You quit acting like you run the show just because you're the fucking oldest. Do what you want. I will. Safeway check stand. They stand in line surrounded by Native American faces. The checker, a middle-aged woman, totals their groceries. Page 37, please. Rebecca looks stricken and turns a steely gaze toward Rainier. I told you. Shit. I'm sorry, man. Can, can you take off the soda? The mother in line behind them stops her. How much are you short? Forty-three cents. It's, it's fine. We don't need it. Just, just take it off. The mother Here. hands the checker a food stamp dollar. Here, take it out of this. Oh, that's, that's okay. That's Thank nice. you so much. No, give him the soda. That's very Thank kind. you. Thank you. They pile their change on the counter, and the checker bags her groceries and surveys the contents. When was the last time you kids had a hot meal? Define meal. The checker gestures at the clamoring kids and the mother behind them. Well, you know, my kids are grown. If you come back in an hour, my name's Carol. You can come home with me, and I'll cook you dinner. Now, why don't you let that poor woman get it? her kids out of here? Exterior midday, Safeway. What do you think? I think we're having dinner in a teepee. No, you idiot. Most Native Americans don't live in teepees anymore. They save those for renting to the stupid white tourists. I don't care if she's a wicked witch taking us to her, back to her candy cottage like Hansel and Gretel. I'm hungry. He pops a soda and takes a big swig. Afternoon at San Javier Reservation Town. Carol's ramshackle little house is on the outskirts of town. There's a goat in the yard. Trailer homes can be seen in the distance. Interior Carol's Kitchen. Carol's serving them a hearty steaming stew with bread and cheese. They love it. The house is filled with colorful art painted on various found items. The bread and cheese are made with the milk from that goat right outside. I started keeping a goat when my daughter turned out to be allergic to cow's milk, and soy milk was expensive and hard to find at the time, so I got a goat. It worked out great. She had fresh, warm goat's milk on her cereal every morning. Well, she was a, she was a lucky girl, apparently. Her brother thought it was gross. Warm, slimy cereal. Mm, I had to buy cow's milk for him, though. I bet he sings a different tune now. Mm. I'd eat anything you serve. This is amazing. Thank you, dear. Yes, they love mom's cooking now. One will be home from college next week, the other one a week after. Can't wait. So you two like quite a walk. That's one way to put it. Probably good the car broke down. We couldn't afford gas anyway. That's looking at the bright side. Night in Carol's backyard. Rebecca and Rainier sprawl on a blanket with Carol beneath the southwestern night sky, taking in the stars. It's so serene, isn't it? Sometimes it's a little too serene. It's nice to have a company at night. Did your husband get sore? No. He didn't have the decency to drop dead. I had to kick his sorry ass out. Wow. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Don't feel sorry for me. My life is beautiful. I may get a little lonely now and then, but it's a hell of a lot better than lying in bed next to someone who's been yelling at you all night, blind, drunk, scaring the shit out of the kids. Now that's loneliness. Nope, I'm not complaining. And I do love it. I really do. I mean, I mean look at it. It's so beautiful. And yes, it is. But it's far more beautiful on a full time with a soft place to sleep. You have to stay here tonight, my dears. Oh, Carol, that's not... God, that sounds good. <laughs> Are you sure you don't mind? Nope. You two 
kick back. I'm gonna go grab some sheets for the kids' rooms. Oh my god, I love her. I mean, how could anyone be mean to her? We're not in a hurry, right? Can we stay with Earth Mother for a while? I haven't felt this good in so long. You can't keep calling her Earth Mother. Her, her name is Carol. But you do, I'm just... No, but I don't mean to. I, she has a perfectly ordinary name like the rest of us. Yeah, but she's Earth Mother, truly. And it feels so nice having her taking care of us. I don't want to take advantage of her. Holy shit, she can I mean, if she had any idea of what we've been eating for the last... Well, since she sold us our groceries, I think she gets the idea. We contemplate the sparkling expanse above them. I wish her sister had found Things might have been different. Yeah. Earth Mother might have reached her in a way that we just couldn't. I wish I could have met her. I start to feel like I know her about who you two. What name would you guys call me if you could choose? Earth Mother. <laughs> That's what you are, Alice. Uh, Car Carol, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. This... What a compliment. Earth Mother, I love it. Thank you. But I am your Earth Mother, and I will try to help you find the ground beneath us and reach for the stars above. You already have. We're looking for our sister out there in the stars right now. I, I can feel so many moments with her. Of course you can. You feel them because they're real. I don't think any moment ever happens or dies. Every moment that was ever precious, every moment you ever shared fully, it's still out there somewhere in the universe. It's floating in space. Rebecca reaches up and traces a pattern in the stars overhead. Like Einstein said that time is like an onion, and if you look far enough, you'll see all the way back around to your head. Something like that. Oh, I'd love to see that far. Just because you can't see something, you know, doesn't mean it's not there. I believe if we reach far enough out, far enough into space, we'll find those moments. I gaze out at the glimmering stars floating in the heavy expanse of space. Morning, Carol's Kitchen. The sunlight glistens on like hanging crystals, throwing rainbows of color on Carol, Rebecca, and Rainier as they have breakfast. You know, you two dropped in at an opportune time. Today is a good day around here. It's the Suara Wine Festival. It's like Christmas in June, but with more drinking. Instead of samples, we have a gift-bearing cactus. Just don't sit on his laps. You guys need to come. Cool. I have nothing to wear. Afternoon in the San Javier Reservation. A crowd of Papago people are gathering amid the smoke of grilling food beneath, uh, beneath the stately uh, swaros. Rebecca wears freshly washed jeans and a tie-dyed t-shirt that's been artfully cut up and tied in various places. Vibrant earrings dangle from her ears and her hair is beautifully braided with electric, eclectic hair ornaments, clearly Carol's handiwork. Carol gestures at an array of earthen pots containing suaro jams and salsas. Those are all made from the suaro fruit, and you should try them all. But of course, the star of the show is the wine. In those oyas there. Carol greets a woman friend. So good to see you, my dear Jess. These are my friends, Rebecca and Renier. They're here visiting me from Portland. They start to <laughs> shake Jess's hands, but she hugs them. Oh, lovely to meet you. And, and this is my son. Suaro, who's home from college, thank God. I've missed him so much. Suaro steps forward, but Rebecca's attention is immediately is already captivated. Welcome, truly. And so thank you for, uh, for you to join us. Hello, wonderful Carol. When are you going to cook for me? Late afternoon, San Javier Reservation. The gathering has grown. Music and lively voices bubble from the desert festivities. Suaro is showing Rebecca and Rainier around. They all have glasses of Suaro wine. Harmony with the world is shown in the body, saturated with the wine, but the dryer can be saturated with the rain. I'll try to drink it. He raises his glass, a passing reveler returns to toast. Here's to the Tohano, the desert. And here's to the sweet gifts of the desert that so generously brings to us. Night, desert beyond the festival. A group of young people have abandoned the distant lights of the festival in favor of their own party. They drink the wine and talk, talk around a bonfire. Rebecca and Rainier are the only Caucasian faces. Rebecca tells Suaro softly of their journey. He listens intently. So it's been a lot slower going since we lost the car, but I suppose it's much more like her actual experience, and, and that's what we wanted to find. So, so I guess it's, it's fitting, in a way. You're on a quest. That's a great honor and responsibility. 